So before I talked about in my ayahuasca experience where I saw my generational traumas being passed down from one to the next, and I thought it'd be interesting to talk about where my mom and dad came from. I think that leads into the story of, of more of my life and my, my siblings' lives. And it's just an incredible story when you talk about what things have, have transpired. You know, we think about our parents and we want to like expect that they're these perfect people and that they know everything and that they understand it all. And when you really start to dig into people's stories, you really understand there's a ton of stuff that's happened to people and the, the trauma is just like unbearable in some cases. And I think with my family specifically, there is so much stuff that has happened. And so today I'm going to talk about just like my mom and dad's kind of more or less how they met, where they came from, and then what kind of led into bringing myself and my siblings into the world. So my dad, he was born into the FLDS and he was born in the, in the early fifties and he was born to Theral Doc Stater and Theral was a member of the FLD, FLDS and they grew up in, they kind of transitioned between North Southern and Southern Utah. And my grandpa had, I believe four wives, I could be wrong. And he had 20 plus children. I, I'm not exactly hundred percent sure how many kids there were. Not a great record keeping situation. And you'll kind of learn why a lot of those people at that time were really ducking from the law because polygamy was is, is illegal in Utah. Well, they've just now taken the criminality out of it, but it's still not a positively looked upon practice. And so in the 50s, the Utah state government raided the FLDS community and they put a bunch of men in prison for pl practicing polygamy. And my grandpa was one of those people. It's a really a defining moment for my dad because when my grandpa was put in prison, what, what happened was his wives all split up. And so my dad's mom and uh, his siblings, I believe he had four or five siblings, they went to New Mexico and my grandma changed her name and she was still, you know, quote unquote with my grandpa, but they had split up so that the children wouldn't potentially be taken away by child services. So my dad, in his early years, he grew up in New Mexico. And what was nice about that is he really got the capability to have somewhat of a normal, when I say normal, I say that because for my upbringing, I went to a church run school run by Warren Jeffs. And so my dad, he, he because the, he moved away, he got to kind of like, he wore normal clothes. He was able to go to a normal school and kind of just have more or less a pretty typical childhood at that time by comparison to some of the people that were still living here in Utah that were part of that religion. Now, my mom, she was not from the FLDS church. She grew up in New Mexico and she had massive amounts of trauma happen to her entirely separated from the FLDS. So my mom, she was born in New Mexico and her dad, my grandpa, I'm actually named after him, Tom, he was in the air force and he had a motorcycle accident and died when he was 24 years old and my mom was only two years old at the time. So my mom and her younger sister that's two years younger was just barely born. And so my grandma on my mom's side, she was a widow at, you know, a very young age, early twenties with two kids, two girls. And so what happened was she ended up marrying another man and my mom's stepdad was not a wonderful person and he he went ahead and molested my mom and her sister throughout their childhood and she you know by the time my mom turned 18 she you know had told me that oh man i couldn't wait to get out of the house finally got out of the house got away from that guy unfortunately my mom's mom and the stepdad were just not great at all and so my mom had a really 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 tumultuous trauma ridden childhood. And one thing I would say is that she did not have even a half model of what a decent man is like. And so happen chance that my mom and dad meet in Albuquerque and my mom is absolutely taken by my dad because my dad, one thing I would say about the FLDS and a lot is like, you know, my dad was brought up pretty, pretty good. And he was really taught to treat women good. He was very respectful, very respectful. And that's one thing I would say about my dad is me growing up, like he always taught us to treat our sisters very, very special and protect them. And so I think my brothers and I, we all are very protective of the women in our family, like extremely overly protective of the women in our family. But what happened was my mom really latched on to my dad because he was very respectful of her and, you know, treated her very well. And, and that was, unfortunately, this was something that she had just never experienced at all. And so they ended up getting married. And after a couple of kids, my dad decided, he's like, Hey, look, I want to move back to Utah and I want to <laughs> 
pursue this religion that I was growing up, I grew up in and all my family's there and everything and all this. And so my mom was more or less like, sure, let's do it. Like she had, she didn't really have anything that she was necessarily holding on to from that perspective. And so she was like, yeah, let's do it. Well, the, the plot thickens because what happens is she moved to, they moved to Utah and my mom's sister was not necessarily doing too hot at life and in New Mexico. And she, she called my mom and said, Hey, can you have your husband talk to the prophet of the FLDS church and find out if I can come and join? Because I have no prospects here in Albuquerque. Like it's just not a great life. Same traumas that my mom was dealing with. So my dad gets in touch with the FLDS prophet at the time and he says hey she wants to move up here and join the church and the prophet said sure she can that will be your second wife this is not something my dad was asking for or trying to get and the the FLDS religion that we grew up in that I grew up in men didn't go out and like recruit their own wives it was all 100% arranged marriages the prophet would assign the women to the men so this was something that my dad was not expecting and then as you can imagine my mom was most assuredly not expecting this, but she went into it, she did it. And let me tell you what, like that was a precursor to massive amounts of trauma that were about to be inflicted upon the rest of my siblings and family as they all had to deal with this thing. And unfortunately for my dad, you know, he's coming from this religion where he's like, well, this is what I've been told is right. So it's like that trauma just keeps rolling down. And so he, in his mind, he's doing what he thinks is the right thing. And unfortunately, you know, it then just continues to pass down the trauma. And so my mom had nine children and my, I guess you could call her my aunt or my second mom, she had one child, she could only have one. So my dad had 10 children, but just to add a little bit of more trauma to that, my dad was married again earlier when he was 19 and had a daughter that then ended in divorce. And so I have another sister, I have two half sisters, and then eight full siblings. That's kind of the, the precursor to kind of where my story begins. But I thought it was important to kind of share that and just understand that I think that this is relatable in the sense that everyone has stuff like this that's happening. And I think it's important for our healing journey to better understand that it's like, we need to understand what's happening because yes, I was brought into this world, but guess what? I am also taking on my parents' trauma in one way or another. And even though I try to address all the trauma in my life, if I don't understand where some of this stuff came from, I can't truly move on. Like I can hold anger against my parents for doing things that they did to me. But if I really look at it, they also experienced trauma. And that's why it's passing down to me. In my opinion, it's not exactly their fault. And I need to come to terms with that. And I think that that's a great understanding for, for all of you is like everyone needs to understand where did this trauma come from? Where did it start from? And how do we become more forgiving to our parents and others that are in our lives that again, they're also suffering and maybe they didn't get the chance. Maybe my dad never did get the chance to ultimately come and face his demons and really try to heal some of the stuff that was extremely traumatic to him and so it's like now it's my job to say like all right well how do i stop that so that my son doesn't take on again this shit that keeps rolling downhill 